Hello, welcome to a new Creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the new Leg Bone Melter of Creature. Now the Leg Melter has been introduced into Creature a couple months ago, but I'm glad to announce that I have added a couple new features that have greatly improved its capabilities. So this is an example of what it can do. You can see on screen here, this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex that has been animated with a run cycle using the new enhanced leg bone motor feature. All right? And in particular, we can pay attention to the legs because that's what the leg motor is all about. If I slow it down, you notice that it does a couple really cool stuff. You notice that it almost like mimics uh, an actual running leg motion and also the tip of the foot, pay attention to this guy over here, tip of the foot actually lifts, lifts off and lands properly on the ground and even does some kind of simulated ground contact motion with a virtual ground. So these are all the new very exciting features that are present in the leg motor which I'm going to introduce to you, to you today and we're going to go through a couple of series of tutorials or hands-on demos if you will to show you how it all comes together. Okay? Alright, so Without further, further ado, let's open another project, a much simpler project, to illustrate what it's capable of doing. All right? Okay, so here is a simple, very simple example of a two-legged two or bipedal human walking. This is, again, done with the leg motor. Okay? And you can see what it can do. It can do simple walking. It can also do a, you know, a, a wide variety of, of styles. You can also do a running motion, like a jog, a casual jog. This, too, is animated with the leg motor. So you can see this motor is very powerful. You can adapt it to different kinds of run or walk motions based on your desires or styles. All right. So how does it work? Well, let's pull up the documentation first. Let me go through what the leg motor actually encompasses. So the leg motor is very similar to, similar to the IK rotate motor, but it's way more fancier. Like internally, the algorithm has been completely redesigned and reworked. So only the concepts are the same, but it employs a much more sophisticated algorithm behind the scenes. But essentially what you need to understand is for leg motion, you have a couple of phases, the lift and the land. That's really what it is. Lift is when the leg lifts off the ground, okay? And land is when, land is when the leg or the foot actually lands on the ground for contact. These are the two key terms you have to understand for a leg motor. So let's go back to this example again. Now I'm gonna, before I even start installing a leg motor and, sh and showing you how a demo, uh, like an interactive demo actually works, let's go through this, this guy over here and see how it works, okay? So this, in this case, for this leg over here, this leg is about to land, right? So you can see the foot over here hits the contact and then now it's in a liftoff stage. This is the liftoff stage. See this? So it now lifts off from the ground, it goes on, and then lands again. Okay, so this is the landing phase, it goes through the ground contact and lifts off. That's the lifting phase. All right, that's what we mean by lift and land. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and create a new animation now and let's see how it works. Okay, so I have a brand new empty animation clip with nothing inside here, right? And we're going to install two leg motors on the legs. I'm going to play around with the leg motor to demonstrate to you the couple, you know, the couple of options you can you can you can play with in order to get the foot motion that you want. So first off, the leg motor works with three bones. That's how it works. So you need obviously the base bone, the middle bone, and the foot bone. So if you want this, the leg motor to run on your character, make sure you have three bones in order for the motor to install. So I'm going to select these three bones. I'll click Install Motor, and then I'll pick the leg motor. It says Simulate Leg Motion with Three Bones. So click on that. Okay. <laughs> Once you install it, something really bizarre happens. Your leg, your foot disappears. Don't worry, nothing's gone wrong. What's happening right now is that the ground, see this line over here, this denotes the virtual ground of contact of your foot, has been placed in the de default, default location, which is obviously the wrong place, right? So we need to move the, the ground to the correct location. So scroll down in the animatable properties panel, and let's adjust it to a more reasonable value. Let's try like negative, I don't know, 14 maybe? All right, there you go, so see? Now the foot is actually resting more appropriately on the ground now. And then, of course, the leg motor is running off a base IK action, and we know this is a human biped, right? So the leg doesn't move like this. So we should flip the IK angles to negative. 
Okay, if we play the animation, you can see it's already do, it's already doing some kind of foot motion, right? It's pretty cool. Now this is like your basic IK roll tape melter. So you're probably wondering what's the big deal. Well, you'll see in a moment what what the big deal is. Let's first of all let's actually increase the width of the rotational motion to see what we get, right? So let's try five. Okay. That's kind of interesting, right? Let's let's take it down maybe to say 3.5. Okay, so now you see what the leg is doing. Now, what's interesting about this is I can change the ground. If I change the smart ground Y, this is the ground contact Y value in world, world coordinates. If I change it to say negative 13, you notice the foot automatically adjusts and almost rests onto the ground. Right? And so that's what's cool about the leg motor is you actually have this virtual ground which you can use for ground contact. And this is how you, we can simulate leg motion a lot more effectively because you can actually have some kind of virtual ground contact motion. Okay, so now we have this leg sort of moving, right? Let's let's make him make the leg lift up just a bit more, so I can scale it up just like a regular IK rotate motor. So let me adjust the scale top so it lifts has more of a lift, right? Okay, so that's that's kind of cool. Now let's actually do something cool with the foot. The foot is an animating, but in a real walk cycle, the foot always changes, right? Depending on where, whether it's lifting off or, or landing. And this, this is where the lift angle and the land angle come in. Those two things I was describing just now. Uh, so let's try changing the lift angle. Okay, so if I change this to negative, say, 90, see what happens. Let me step through the frames. Okay, so it's lifting up. Oh, that's too much. Let's uh, change negative 80. And then let's lower the, the ground contact, because I think the foot is a bit too close to the ground. So let me lower it. Let's see what we get right now. OK, it's going. And now you see the foot actually twists to the foot actually twists. You notice, you notice the foot actually twists as it, it enters the lifting stage, correct? So actually hits the angle of negative 80, right? And then as it lands in the landing phase, we can actually change the, the angle as, as well. So we can change the land angle to say 20 degrees to give it more of a, a landing angle, which is how human foot moves, right? So now let's see what happens. So it hits the ground and then it changes to the lift angle, which is negative 80 degrees. It comes up, right? And then it transitions to the land angle. See how it arches up now? And then it contacts, it hits the ground, right? That's pretty cool. So there you, you can very easily simulate some kind of pseudo human walk cycle just by doing that. So that's kind of, kind of, kind of neat, right? See how easy it was for us to animate this entire single foot walk motion phase just by tweak tweaking a couple of parameters, plus even has ground contact. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the other foot now. So let's go in and let's install this for the other foot. Okay, so I'm going to install a leg motor for him. Oh, there are two, only works with three bones, so remember that. So let's select the other guy. Okay, let's install a leg motor. Okay, again, it's in the wrong position, but don't worry, I'm, going to just, I'm just going to copy the values from the previous motor onto the new motor to save time. So I'm going to select the previous motor that we configured, click on Animate, and then there is an option called Copy Values to Select a Motor. Click on that, okay? Now click on the new motor, now click on Animate, and then paste those values in. And then there you go. Now you have two motors doing the same thing, except we should flip Again, we should flip the IK angles because this is a human biped, right? All right. Okay, so that's cool, except of course, it's still not a real walking motion because as you know from the previous tutorials, the two motion, the two leg motions have to be out of phase, right? That's what the phase thing does. So we just scroll down and find the, find the phase parameter and we want them to be out of phase by half a cycle. So we put in a 0.5 here, okay? And now you actually have a kind of walking motion. That's kind of cool, right? And you notice, let me slow this down so we can actually see what's going on. You notice the foot actually simulates almost like what a real foot does. It hits the ground, it does contact, and then it twists upwards, 
right, to lift off the ground, and then as it comes in, it twists back again to do the landing phase, the landing motion. So that is really, really cool. You can basically do very interesting foot motion just by playing around with these parameters. Now, of course, there's also other things you can play with. Now, there's an option called Smart Foot Scale. If you want to make the ground contact more obvious, like right now you can see the foot's actually going into the ground, but the reason why it happens is because we're giving you some kind of leeway to, to have more twisting behavior. But if you want the foot to have less, less intersection with the ground or penetration with the ground, you can play around with this option called Smart Foot Scale. This basically scales up the foot to allow for more ground contact, right? So you now you notice the, the foot actually has less interpenetration with the ground. So you can play around with that parameter as well at your own leisure to get the look you want. So now you can see how the foot is actually moving by the leg motor. And what we did was adjust a couple of properties and we already have kind of a really cool walk cycle motion. Now obviously I can tweak this a lot more to get a more compelling result. So let's let's go back to our other examples to see what we got what we have. So here is a walk a simple leisurely stroll. This is done with a leg motor. Let me go through the different concepts here. So again you can notice I have the ground placed over here, placed over here, and this is the rotational arc defined by the leg motor. And I also have the lift angle at negative 70 degrees. Okay, so when it lifts off, when, when the leg motor actually lifts, lifts off, it rotates to an angle of negative 70, like here. And it keeps going, and then when it's landing, I have the land angle at 10 degrees. Okay, so that's how I get my walking cycle motion. And the other one just ha has a phase of offset of 0.5. Okay, very simple. Now, of course, having a walk motion is more than just the leg motors, as you know. So for the base root bone, I have a move bounce motor applied to it, right? So I have two different amplitudes, the, the two different amplitudes, amplitude X and amplitude Y applied to it to give some kind of a bounce to the character, some kind of gait, right? And a cool thing about the creature motor system is all the motors work in sync with one another. So you have this really nice motion where it's it's going up and down and slightly forwards and backwards while the leg motors will compensate for the base motor motion. That's pretty cool. Now and then of course the two arms are swinging so I have a rotate cycle for the base root of the two arms. Just a very simple rotate cycle and then just a bit of more and a bit more swing or secondary motion to the ends of the arms. I have a band physics motor so you, you get that sway. See that nice sway over here? that's accomplished by the bend physics with a rather high stiffness parameter. Okay, so that's how you get the arm swinging very leisurely and then you have a nice leisurely walk. Oh, and also one more tip, one more really cool tip is you notice as I play the animation, this part of the skin almost stretches and, and rotates almost in a 3D fashion. All I've done here is just attach another bone that's in, let me show you the rig, that's influencing that's influencing the chest over here, but this bone's parent is actually this arm over here, okay? So this arm is the parent of this bone, and this bone, if you look at the weighting, is actually influencing the chest. Now as the arm moves, as I drag the arm, you notice the chest also slightly moves, right? And so this gives it like a 3D feel. So as the character actually walks, let me turn off the bones, you can see the chest also moves about. In a, in a pseudo 3D fashion, so it adds a lot of depth to the character, if you will. So here's a leisurely, leisurely stroll created with the new enhanced leg motor, okay? And we can also look at the run now, now you probably get the idea, here's the character jogging or running, and this is again done with the leg motor, except this time around, let's take a look at the, yeah, the arc is a lot more pronounced, right? It's a lot more wider because we have a running gait, and we have a higher speed as well, and of course the same concepts apply. So I have the same lift angle, let me slow this down, I have the same lift angle and land angle. So as I go through the motion, let's go through the motion, you notice that essentially the foot will lift, it will lift up and then it will come down again and then lifts up again based on the land and lift angles, right? So that's kind of cool, that's, that's really really powerful. 
and that allows you to simulate running, walking, whatever kind of walk or, or run motion, run cycle of your character very easily with the lake multers. Okay? All right, so this, this concludes the leg motor introduction and interactive tutorial for this character. Now let's go back to the Tyrannosaurus, because that's a lot cooler. I'm sure you guys are anticipating that character as well. And so let's take a look at the leg motor test. Now the same concept, concepts apply as well. This is exactly what I've done. You can notice the virtual ground of contact is placed over here. Here's the line. Okay. And for this character, the valid IK angles are positive because it's a different kind of creature. It's not a human biped, it's actually some kind of bird-like dinosaur, right? So that's how it moves. But, you know, still, still the same concept, concepts apply. You have the negative 95 degrees for the land angle, and you have a negative 60 degrees for the lift angle. And that basically allows you to simulate a running dinosaur. Okay, I can uh, go through the frames you notice how realistic actually the run cycle is using a lake bolter. That's pretty cool. Right? You notice the foot actually lifts properly. It's almost like it's alive, right? The dinosaur is actually alive. It's actually just running across the plains and everything else just comes into place, falls into place, so to speak. Now, what's cool about this character too, other than the leg motion, is there's tons of physics motors running, and that allows you to have all that dynamics. So there's a bunch of physics motors coming through the neck, or the, the top of the body over here. There's a, another physics motor coming through the arms and the chest, and then again near the belly. And then even the, the head over here, this too is a physics motor, right, to make it bob around. And the easiest way to take a look at this is to load up the NM rig graph, and you can take and can basically see what the physics motors are driving this dinosaur, right? So if I just look at Ben physics motor, I can isolate it, and I can see there's a physics motor on the upper part of the body. There's a physics motor at the the belly, close to the belly. There's a physics motor at the chest. There's a physics motor near the head, and of course there's a physics motor at the tail, right? So when this whole thing runs, when this character, this creature runs, when Tyrannosaurus is running, all the dynamics kicks in and it all is driven by the overall base motion of the dinosaur. So it's very cool. Everything comes together and the leg actually has a very realistic gait thanks to the new enhanced leg motor. Okay? All right, so thanks, uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. Now all the examples are available online. You can download them and play with them at your leisure. And I hope you have fun animating with the new enhanced leg motor.